The time has come for pastors, pulpit ministers, and intercessors to experience God's greatness. At WEMA, we are called of the Lord to equip, refresh, and prepare the body of Christ for its glorious future. Join us at www.wemaonline.org. Amen, 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 amen. Well, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our first speaker of the day. He is our founder, and we're so excited to have him with us and sharing the word of the Lord. His name is H.E., that's His Excellency, Ambassador Dr. Andre Thomas. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about him. Dr. Thomas is a visionary, a bishop, an economic leadership coach, thought leader, and prolific author. He has worked in the ministry for over 20 years, planting churches holding leadership empowerment conferences and building Bible colleges. He serves as the president of the CILC, an organization with a mission to drive initiatives and facilitate efforts to create greater and closer national ties, economic development ties, and faith-based ties between the Caribbean and Israel. Visionary, he's the visionary and CEO of the Ideas and Solutions Group, an economic leadership development media publishing and education company. Bishop Thomas is the visionary and president of FAWN, F-A-W-N, an organization with a mission to influence and empower people globally from the church to take the world changing ideas and solutions from concept to reality. He is also the visionary and bishop of DVA, a growing network of local assemblies that take people from bondage to greatness. He is married to his soulmate and ministry partner, Nina Thomas, and he has two daughters. Well, listen, I know him personally, so I can tell you that not only is he everything on this paper, he is a father, a spiritual father to many, a man of wisdom, and we're so excited for what God has, is, has put in his heart to share with us today. So we're going to turn it over to you, Ambassador Thomas. Thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Walton. Thank you so much. Thank you for your drive. Thank you for your energy, uh, for yourself, and uh, in the organization of this. Hallelujah. You know, I just want us today, I believe today is going to be a life-defining moment for ministers of the gospel and for intercessors and for those who love the church. I just sense that so much in my spirit. And uh, I just want us, I just sense in my heart that we need to lift our hands up and do some extra prayer today, that our capacities will expand. Hallelujah. So let's pray. Hallelujah. Because God is doing something special in our midst. Something special is happening in our midst. It's the birth of a move of the spirit that would not only touch the Caribbean, but would touch our generation. This is what this is about. It's about us standing up and taking a responsibility for being vessels through which a move of God will spread across the nations of the earth, and that we will play our portion, our portion in that which heaven has given us in the region of the Caribbean. Let's just lift up our hands and begin to pray. I want you to pray this. Say, Heavenly Father, I want you to say, Heavenly Father, by your spirit, bring me into alignment with your dealings in the earth today. Begin to pray. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, bring me into alignment. Bring me into alignment with your dealings in the earth. Bring me into alignment with your dealings in the earth. Very, very critical. Bring me into alignment with your dealings in the earth in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bring me into alignment with your dealings in the earth. Bring me into alignment with your dealings in the earth. Bring me into alignment with your dealings in the earth. Father, I pray that you do this in the mighty name of Jesus, that you bring us into alignment. Now, next thing I wanted to pray is, Father, reveal to me the secret things that have eluded me, that are required for me to step into the center of your plan for my life. Say, Father, reveal to me 
the secret things. Reveal to me the secret things. Reveal to me the secret things. Reveal to me the secret things in the mighty name of Jesus. Reveal to me the secret things that have eluded me, that have eluded us. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. There shall be a thrusting forth by the anointing. There shall be a thrusting forth by the anointing. There shall be a thrusting forth by the anointing. One more prayer. One more prayer. Every satanic hindrance, pray this, say every satanic hindrance, every satanic hindrance into me stepping into the center of the purposes of God in this generation. I bind right now in the name of Jesus. Every satanic hindrance, every satanic hindrance, every satanic hindrance in the name of Jesus. Every satanic hindrance. Hallelujah. Every satanic hindrance, every satanic hindrance in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, every satanic hindrance I bind right now, destroy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more. And the sense that first, okay, the last one come up. Say, Heavenly Father, the wisdom, the wisdom to birth the outcomes that you want in my life in this season, be pleased to me right now. The wisdom to birth the outcomes that you want in my life right now, release to me right now in the name of Jesus. The wisdom to birth the outcomes that you want. Release your wisdom to me right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. For it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of the living God. Can somebody shout amen? Okay. Hallelujah. It is just great to be here with you. It's great to be able to share with you the Word of God. Today is a day of illumination. Today is a day of insight. Today is a day that's going to shift you. Hallelujah. And I want you to come with a humble heart, to come with a hungry heart, to receive that which the Spirit of God is doing in our midst. It is very, very important that you come like that. Amen. So let's go into the Word. Uh, I wanted right at the beginning to lay a foundation, uh, to lay a foundation of really what ministry is. Because if you don't understand, what pulpit ministry is, if you don't understand, okay, what a watchman is, then everything that we're doing today, you will not fully grasp or it will not fully benefit you. So it's very important to understand definitions. Definitions are critical. So it's very important that you understand definitions because here is a, a concept. The fastest 100 meter runner in the world is a master at the basics. He's a what? He's a master at the basics. So it is the, it is the flawless execution of the basics that causes a person to be a master. Absolutely. The, 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 the most dynamic game changing basketball player is that way because of what? They have mastered the basics. So in the world of pulpit ministry, in the world of being a watchman, if you don't master the basics, then you are not going to be able to rise and become the vessel God has called you to be. This is very, very critical. Amen? Okay, very critical. So... Let's now step into the scripture that I want us to go through. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Let's be right up. Hallelujah. Okay. So let's go to our key scripture. Okay. Now. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, 
for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and seasons. He moves kings and sets up kings. So the basic that we shared is that in the realm of the spirit, God measures periods by seasons. And for each season in the realm of the spirit, there is a divine product that is released on the earth. And then under the sun, he measures time. So you have time under the sun, and in the realm of the spirit, you have what? Seasons. Okay. Now, the scripture tells us that when seasons change globally, kings arise and kings get put down. Okay. Now, one of the things that happens is because these kings tend to do what? These kings tend to forget the basics. So let me give you, let me give you an actual foundation. We're talking about the laws of mastery. Okay, the laws of mastery. Okay, now, if you study what happened with BlackBerry, BlackBerry led the market along with iPhone. And they had a game change phone, a game changing device. Now, a season changed when, when Google created Android, the Android operating system. Now, and in the black in the black, in the Blackberry boardroom, they decided that they were not going to change the design to a smartphone design. And that's why they lost. So that one decision, that they were going to stick to the model that they had. Now here is what causes a lot of people to fail. Your message does not change with the times. Your grace, does not change with the times. It can be upgraded. It can, you can go in it. Your message does not change with the times. Your grace does not change with the times. You can grow in the things of God. Your mandate does not change because the mandate of BlackBerry was to deliver superior telecommunications systems to the world. And they were doing that. But this is what happens, why people fail. Why people fail when times and seasons change. Because when times and seasons change, models have got to change. When times and seasons change, models have got to change. Now, models are not fixed in stone. So let's look at it from a biblical point of view. Because this also affects Okay, ministers of the gospel. It affects ministers of the gospel. Um, now, if you look at when Israel came out of Israel, when Israel came out of Egypt, the first model that God used to manifest, to manifest himself to the children of Israel was Moses leading the people. And we talked about the cloud of fire by day, the, the, the cloud by day and the, and the fire by night. So he began with that model. And that's all they had. They had a, a physical cloud, okay, that they saw. Then after the encounter in the mountain, it changed and God spoke to Moses to build a tabernacle. And so the model changed from that model to the tabernacle model, which was the tabernacle of Moses. So the model changed. I want you to hear me. The message did not change. The grace did not change. The mandate to go into the promised land did not change. The mandate to occupy the promised land did not change. Now, there was more details of what God wanted to do were being revealed along the way, but that was all in one continuum. Hear me. If you're going to master 
changing, during times of changing the earth, you've got to master this. And that is mandates do not change, but models change. Now, okay, this is the law. If your model does not change to deliver your mandate, when seasons change, you will become a relic. This is the law. Write it down. If your model does not change to deliver your mandate, when seasons change globally, you will become a relic. Because mandates, now, Blackberry had a mandate. They do not have to change that. But their model did not change. It, because the world had moved to the smartphone model. And because they did not move to the smartphone model, they became a relic. They actually became a relic. Now, so let's look at what happens in God's word. So God changes them. The model changes from Moses leading with a cloud of glory and the pillar of fire by night. That is how it began. From the time they hit the Red Sea, that cloud appeared. The cloud appeared. Then God spoke to Moses and told him about the tabernacle. And then that cloud was still evident, but now the cloud would appear in the tabernacle. Okay? So the model changed. Then they got into Canaan land. And then the model changed with David's tabernacle, with David's tabernacle, because David's tabernacle was different. David did not have Moses' tabernacle. David more had the Ark of the Covenant surrounded by 24-hour worship. So the model changed. Then the model changed, but the mandate was still the same. God's mandate for Israel never changed. God's message to Israel never changed, but the model changed. Then, hallelujah, David dies, and then you have Solomon, and Solomon builds the temple, and guess what happens? It's moved from David's tabernacle to what? The temple. Guess what? The model changes. <laughs> I said the model changes. So, all throughout the journey, you see a changing of model until it gets to the model that God originally intended. And for the old covenant, it was what? It was the tab, it was the it was Solomon's temple. So what I'm sharing with you right now is that the model of Christianity, the models that we use to deliver our mandates, the models that we use to deliver our messages, those models if they do not change with the times, we will become a relic. Now, the times have changed, where the times, your times should change. If your times do not change to match the change of season, you will become a relic. And I'm going to be sharing later on launch codes for the model of the spirit for this generation. For there is a model of the spirit that I'm going to be sharing with you for this generation. So as you listen to all the speakers, as you listen to the wisdom that is shared, I want you to not be addicted or to not be uh, stuck with a model that has changed and now must become, must be upgraded to match the dealings of God at that, in that generation. So as I end with this, I'll share with you the second law. Models change many times when new generations appear. And also, Models change when global seasons change. It is in the councils of God 
when he releases a new model. And I can share this with you right now. There is a new model. It's a upgrade on what has been in the church, but this is the model that's going to deliver the glorious church just before Jesus returns. It's the glorious church model. This is the church, this is the model in which the church is exalted above all nations. And all nations will flow into it. I remember the Lord speaking this to me in closing. When I was studying the tabernacle of David and the temple of Solomon. If you compare the difference in those structures, the, the, the Temple of Solomon is the most expensive building ever completed in the history of the earth. There's been no other structure on the earth that's been more expensive than that. And it housed the glory of God. The tabernacle that preceded it was David's tabernacle. It was very plain. It had the glory and had 24 hour worship. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, listen to this. He said, the steps that were taken to move from Moses' tabernacle to Solomon's temple are the same steps, the same size of steps that will be taken to go from where the church has been to where it will be before my return. Wow. The temple of Solomon was a temple of wisdom. It was a temple of prosperity. It was a, it was a, we, they estimate $400 billion temple. The tabernacle of David. Now, both of them still, the, both of them had the glory. But one, oh my God, the comparison, oh my goodness. And then the Lord spoke to me. He said, just like Solomon had a major problem in which he was asked to build a temple that had never been built before. Even so, there are visionaries today who their parents had visions in the order of David's tabernacle, but they are now having visions in the order of Solomon's temple. And you cannot, you cannot compare both of them together. And he says, I would infuse them with wisdom. And he told me, he said, I'm sending you to solve the Solomon problem. And I said, what is the Solomon problem? He said, the Solomon problem is to have a vision that is bigger than your reference point. Is to have a vision that is bigger than what has ever existed in the earth before in your generations. And you, and you don't have the experience to build it. He says, that's the Solomon problem. And he says, my, so this organization has been created to solve the Solomon problem. In which there are ministers who God has given you visions that are bigger than your history. Bigger than your experience, bigger than your connections, but there is an infusion of wisdom, hallelujah, that would come upon you to cause you to take the type of leap that Solomon took when he went from David's tabernacle to Solomon's temple. Hallelujah. And I declare this over your life that as you study today, as you spend time in the word today, this is what happens to you in the name of Jesus. That today, the Solomon problem will be solved in your life. Be blessed. Amen. The time has come for pastors, pulpit ministers, and intercessors to experience God's greatness. At WEMA, we are called of the Lord to equip refresh and prepare the body of Christ for its glorious future. Join us at www.wemaonline.org.